Okay, hi. What up? Hi, I'm Sarah McLeod. Uh, this is my good friend, Mick Skelton. We're on live on the lot. And if you forget, it's right behind us uh, on Skippy TV. Please excuse my manicure. I got up late this morning. This is my new single called Giants. I'm Jasmine Ray here, live on the lot. Now, our guest today has been packing a punch since 1994. She first burst onto the scene as the front woman for a sensational ARIA award-winning platinum-selling band, The Super Jesus. And as a solo artist, she's been touring around and topping the charts all around the world. Sarah McLeod is one of the coolest and most respected Aussie rock chicks in history. So we are very, very excited to have her here live on the lot to chat to us about her new album, Rocky's Diner. Thanks that is for coming. the most flattering and elaborate introduction <laughs> I've ever had. Thanks, Jazzy. It came with great. <laughs> so we just actually kind of stole you from your tour. Yes, you did. Well, I'm mm. actually at the tail end of the tour, so I'm, I'm kind of dragging my bones over the finish line, to be honest. But it was a great tour. It was short, mm. it was snappy, and it was gruelling. 
slightly excruciating, but lots of fun. Yeah, the kind of, a good pain, a kind of... Good pain, yeah, rock yeah. and roll is always good pain. And yeah. like, you know, you'd know, you're a singer, there's always pain in rock and roll. There you is. Know, there's always problems and pain and dramas, but it's good. It's good. Wouldn't have it any other way. That's true, that's very true. So yeah. now that you've kind of been doing the first part of the tour, there's a second half of the tour yes. coming as well. Yes. Um, which is it going to be the same? Is it going to? How's the, what's the setup going to be for this? Well, second? basically, this was we were just seeing if it would work on on this one. So it was a short run. Uh, it was called the Giants Tour because Giants was the first single that came out, and we were kind of feeling our way through it because I didn't really know what I was doing, mm. um, because I was playing the bass and the guitar at the same time through this guitar that I designed that has two outputs, and. Um, I've taken like the bottom two strings go through some succession of pedals into a huge bass rig and then the other one goes to a Marshall stack. So I had to rewrite everything to make it so that I could play all the lead parts and the main riffs and the bass at the same time and it was really scary. So um, we only learned quite a short set because mm -hmm. my mind was baffling just preparing that in the time frame. And I still wasn't sure if it was going to work. Like it was a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. I tried small little, um, just for, for ease sake, I tried small cabinets, base cabinets. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great, it'll look the same height as my Marshall. You know, look cool, yeah. nice and small, can carry it. But all this weird like boop, 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 boop stuff used to happen. And I'd be like, what's that? And then one day I tried this giant 8x10, what they call a fridge yep. base rig. And it sounded unreal. And I was like, oh, no. I That's have to carry why the, the bass fridge. Players bring it. Yeah. That's why they bring it. And mm -hmm. um, so anyway, now I have this really elaborate rig. Awesome. Oh yeah, but it's it's punishing carrying it around. It's but it's really elaborate rig. Um, it's, but I've got it right now. But it has taken the last sort of few gigs. Each night we were finding our feet, honing the show. Okay. But now we know what we're doing. Now we've got to go away and work out the rest of the set because we still need like another half an hour. So what made you want to become both the singer, the guitarist and the bass player? Financial restraints. No. <laughs> <laughs> and <That's> just downright <laughs> ego. <laughs> Between because financial restraints and it. ego, what? Because, yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, cool. I saw, um, there was actually two reasons, two legitimate reasons besides financial restraints and ego. Mm -hmm. um, when I recorded the album, I recorded the album in New York. Mm. Um, well, I wrote the album in New York, sorry, and I was doing the demos there. Mm -hmm. And I had only bought one guitar with me. And I would put all the guitars down. And I think, now I need bass. Um, so I didn't have a bass because I had too much luggage. So I would tune the guitar down, put it through an octave pedal and mm -hmm. through a bass simulator. And then I would play the bass on the guitar. And I was like, that's actually really cool. It worked really well. So then when we uh, were thinking about how to do it live, I was like, all right, so we're going to need a bass player and a pianist and, you know, this and that. And then I was thinking, this is it's going to be a punish having all these people on the road and it's going to cost me a fortune. Mm. And then I remembered I toured with this band in America with the Super Jesus in the early 90s called Local H. Mm -hmm. And the, I, don't, I don't know how they set it up, but I remember there was only two of them. There was a drummer and one other guy, Scott, and he had the bass coming through as well as the guitar. I have no idea how he did it. I don't remember, but I know that he did it, so I knew it could be done. Mm. So I just kind of mucked around and just used common sense until I worked out how to do it and I just sort of sacrificed a couple of guitars and Frankenstein the hell out of them, rewired things. And You're a scientist like a, as yeah, well. I had a lab coat, little glasses, <laughs> stethoscope. No, that's the doctor. Huh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a full science project. That's and really cool. I had cool. gone from having not one single pedal at all, because I always thought that guitarists that use pedals, they're sort of hiding behind pedals, this weird sort of mm. purist thing I had. You don't need pedals, you know, just learn how to play the thing. People but suddenly I got that many pedals mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh no, I'm one of them. But I have to because it's the only way I can make it work. Yes. So basically it's just going to get more elaborate, longer, um, sharper and more honed. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and with any luck, better. <laughs> gooder. It's going to be gooder. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. So you wanted to kind of do more of that yourself. And with the writing process of this record, you wanted to write it all on your own and yeah. you produced it as well. Yeah. Um, and so is that kind of... Stay out of my way! Yeah, just like, <laughs> it's, yeah, because you can and you just always thought, why not? Yeah, because I've got this really bad trait that if someone is working with me that can do what I do as good, if not better, I'll go, oh, okay, you do it then. Yes. I, I've yes. always noticed it. If I'm writing with someone and I think that they're good, I'll just kind of like take a bit of a back seat and let them go. Same with mm. producers. If they go, no, it should be this sound, I'll like, Oh, oh, okay, well, you probably know more than me because you're older than me. You know, that's what I've always thought my whole life. Yeah. Now that I'm old, I'm like, yeah, bugger it, I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. I know what to do. So I thought, 
Um, I didn't want anyone's outside influences at all mm -hmm. because I didn't want opinions getting in the way because I know I'm so easily led. Um, like if I played it to someone and they went, yeah, or even if they had like a slight, you know, like weird look in their yeah. eye, I'd go, they hate it, you know, because yeah. I'm so paranoid. What do you mean by this? So yes, the, only, yes. the only thing I thought I could do is just get out of town, mm. don't talk to anyone, don't play anything to anyone until you have the final product. Wow. Yeah. And, That's huge. Yeah. And I, I told my label I'm going to take three months to do it, mm -hmm. exactly three months. And I'm gonna, so you gave them a date? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Um, I said that you'll have it at the end of March. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'll go, I'm going to go to New York because I used to live in New York. So I know it well. I've sort of got all of the, yeah, I'm in New York out of my system, but I love the idea of being in a city that's sort of full of possibility and mm. magic because mm -hmm. it makes you feel like you can do anything. Yes. You know, I didn't really go anywhere. I didn't actually do anything. I just bunkered in in this apartment that you I hired. You a whole album, but yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah, but I didn't yeah. like, you know, do anything New york -y. Well, mm, I did mm. fly in a chopper over Manhattan one day. <laughs> <laughs> right, a whole album ready in a chopper. No, someone Manhattan. gave it to yeah, me. Yeah. Actually, Mick gave it to me as my birthday present. Oh, cool. Yeah, because I was over there for my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I sat there, it was snowing, and I just bunkered in the snow set my studio up, I just had this one little window that I'd look out, which was a crossroads of this hectic, like really dangerous kind of crossroads where people were fighting oh, every wow. night. There was, yeah, there was cops everywhere. And I'd just sit there going, whoa, man. Mm. And I started on the 1st of January and I did not stop. And when I say do not stop, I mean like, I, I work, when I start working, I get so intense. Like I run to the bathroom. Yeah. I, I, don't, I very rarely eat. I run to the fridge to get beer. All I do is just sit there and drink beer and yeah. just focus. My eyes are bugging out of my head. I'm talking to myself nonstop, like total insanity. Wow. And I was like that nonstop for three months. And then I started on the 1st of January and then I submitted the album to the label at 11.30 at night on the 31st of March yeah. in its correct order. And here it is, it's called Rocky's Diner. Oh my gosh. Did it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and it now intense. it's out. Now it's out for yep. people to hear. It's out of the closet. People have been waiting. Oh yeah, to, well I've to been waiting this. too. I've been yeah. sitting on it since last March. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your music. My where pleasure, can Jess. people find out about where the, the um, not the Giants Tour, the Giants Tour is finished. Yep. It's Rocky's Diner's Tour. Rocky's Diner Tour, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my website, which is um, sarahmcleod.com.au. Go there. Go there. I'll be there. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for having me, Jesse. Thank you. Okay, hi. I'm Sarah McLeod. You might know me from the song we played two seconds ago. This is Mick Skelton. We're on live on the lot on Skippy TV. This song's called Wild Hearts. She's not 18 Living on guts and Coca-Cola She's never been on a train at the ocean salty water She works at night And during the day she writes her stories Embellishing details Of all her hopes and all her glory All she needs is living inside her Domes from his travels. She shakes them all up in a row and flies from London to Seattle. And that gives her a beautiful feeling.